Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Hey, Babe. How you feeling? I feel good. I feel okay. Yeah, because you were telling me this. I got What'd a you do? A, I what, a, what'd my silly Sal do? Okay, I didn't do it on perp. <laughs> what happened? I, bit, I was late night. I was looking for a snack. They call it grazing, I think. Grazing. Yeah. Which just makes me feel like a... a, a animal a cow yeah yeah i guess that's what it is right yeah. you is, yeah. is it made to feel you like you, they say you shouldn't graze i think graze you never you ever see when a when a, when a team a football team loses bad but the quarterback's got like 500 yards you're like those are garbage yards yes they just they were down they were just yes. the ball out. exactly I feel like when you're grazing those are garbage calories garbage calories yeah, like, on the grazing yeah you're not but also yes grazing yeah but also you know the most in shape people and like the skinniest people I know and the, and the most ripped people, they graze all day. They never eat like one big meal. They're eating their calories like every couple There's of hours. There's a way to graze probably. You know, small meals throughout the day keep your metab going. What you, know? you want to do, yeah. what you want to do if you can, is keep your diet in the gray zone. The in gray, the, you want to stay in the gray zone. Gray zone. In the gray zone. Life is gray Grazing zone. is dangerous, though, if you're not, if you're not uh, tabula- uh, ta- uh, calculating it. That's why you have the fitness pal. I know. But you got you to be careful, because you know what you'll do? You'll graze, and you'll forget. I know. I, I swear to God. You ever, you, ever, you ever say, I'll enter it later, then you go to enter your calories at the end of the day? Yeah, oh, and then it's banned. Because you're and not supposed it, to do that. But then you go, and you go, oh, I just blew the doors off today. Yeah, yeah. No, the one, couple of times I've done that, I genuinely, multiple times in my life since I was doing this fitness pal thing, I've blown my load on breakfast yeah i've eaten two thousand calorie breakfast many many times in my Since life Since you've been doing the fitness app though yeah but now i don't as much <laughs> now i just have a siggy's yogurt yeah so that siggy's is great siggy's is a, shout i out google siggy's. shout out siggy's Wait, we can <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great siggy's, siggy's yogurt with a little saratoga peanut butter oh god bless you saratogs it's our, this is our, our weekly shout out. I don't think we shout them out last By week. By the way, coming your way very soon, we're getting our own Saratoga it's peanut butter. It's happening. It's happening. Proceeds going to charity. We will let you know as soon as that's available. We are literally thinking of the flavor right now. We're in the throes of producing this. We got to think of a label. We're going to think of the flavor. We might be doing a no pressure pack. No pressure pack. Yeah. I. Th- it's funny how you literally do another podcast with the great with our great friend Joe DeRosa called Taste Buds that's about food, but yet we're the one that plugged the food. <laughs> we plug the food we all day plug, on this show. We plug everything all day long. I saw one of the last episodes with DeRosa on Taste Buds, I brought it up because I we just found out the information. Pimp told me, and I'm like, oh my God, because we were doing peanut butter and jelly versus grilled cheese. Right. I mean, Where do you go? Peanut butter jelly. That's where I went. I won't yeah. say who won, but that's where I freaking went. Peanut butter jelly hard, all day. Though. I don't. I don't like grilled cheese. I don't. I can't eat. By the way, I can only eat cheese if it's melted. I can't eat and will never eat cold cheese. That's insane. There's never once in my life that I've ever been out anywhere and ordered a cold cheese platter or even pe- taken a piece of cold cheese. If you melt it and put it you on put bread, it on a sandwich, on a sandwich. Oh, re- if I'm being 100 percent crystal clear, honest with you though, yeah. I really only eat cheese on pizza. Uh, egg and cheese and cheeseburgers. I would never, I've never eaten cold cheese and I've, I would say in my life. You don't snack on cheese? Less than 10 times. cheese board? You don't love peeling out a, oh, a single American, yellow American and just throwing it in your mouth? I, I've done it, I've done it maybe, what is it? Surf, sufferers of, of turophobia associate cheese with a traumatic memory. <laughs> Tura- oh, what, what happened to you with cheese? No, nothing. From I don't think anything. From cheddar to mozzarella, turophobes often have to run away if they so much as see a slice of cheese. Yeah. Some may fear one type of cheese, while others may fear cheese altogether. No, dude. I Somniophobia don't- comprises often irrational excessive fear of sleep. I've eaten less than 10 grilled cheeses in my entire life. That is raw. That's Star and Buck Wild. Yeah. Hot 97. Hot, shout out Hot 97. Yeah. Star and Buck. Star would always shout say. Shout out Sway. It. Shout out Morning Show. Shout out Breakfast Club. Ev- oh, shout, shout out, them all out. Z100. Yeah, so, yeah, everybody. Yeah. Star, Star from Star and Buck Wild would always say, uh, I'm in a conundrum. He would always say that. Oh, yeah? Oh, no, he'd, he would always say, I'm in a quagmire. Quagmire. He would say quagmire. He said, I have a quagmire. Yeah. Um, you, oh, wait, you don't love cheese? I do love cheese, but it has to be of, melted. What about a beautiful tray of fresh mozzarella? Never in my, I've never in my life eaten one. Chris, stop I've had fresh it. mozzarella, but not. You don't love fresh mozzarella? No, no I love it, That's but my I, biggest vice. But I've only ever had it on a sandwich. What? Is it is it keto fresh mozzarella? By the way, well, it's low carbs, low sugar. So yes, I would yeah, say. Yeah, high so. fat. 
I, I, I've only, I've never, I've had fresh mozzarella, but and only a on a sandwich. Plate with a little balsamic drizzle, maybe a sweet road roasted pepper. Maybe I've or, had that or twice. A steak tomato or something, an heirloom. Maybe twice in my life I've had that. Wow, what about burrata? That you I've want a never. Nice burrata with fig and maybe pine nuts, and you mix it up and you dip a nice crostini into it. I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you again. Not only have I never had burrata, I've never heard of burrata. Have you heard of burrata, pimp? What do you mean? Burrata's on every menu ever. It's like it's almost like a fresh mozzarella. It's a creamy cheese. Never heard of it. You had stracciatella. Wait, wait, what do you? What? Wait, wait. Because you, you, you know what it is now. You found out you're mostly German, not mostly Italian. German. <laughs> yeah. You did the twenty three and me. You're ninety nine percent German. I never. My I was never in my life. You don't know what burrata cheese is though. Burrata, like I never seen it on a menu even. You never heard the word. I don't think I've ever heard I mean, the word. I'm not looking down on you. I'm just. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not throwing stones here. I'm just saying, like I thought. I, I maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I thought that uh, the people knew what that was. They sell it in the supermarket. The cheeses that I've heard of. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm being serious. Here, American cheese. Yeah. Swiss cheese. Yeah. Munster cheese. Yeah. Mozzarella cheese. Name as many as you can. Okay. American cheese. Swiss cheese. Munster cheese. Uh. Uh. Um. Uh. Mozzarella cheese, right. buffalo mozzarella cheese. Nah, nah. Okay, mozzarella cheese and um. Uh, you don't know more than four cheese and and blue cheese. Yeah, blue cheese. But you've heard of gorgonzola. Gorgonzola. I've heard provolone. Of. Provolone. Yes. Uh, cheddar. Cheddar. Goat yeah. cheese. Goat cheese. Uh, 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 what's that other one? With that, uh, with, uh, um, it's a little spicy. Jack. It's pepper Pe Jack. Pepper Jack. You heard of that? Yes. Yeah. You heard of uh. Uh, you said monster. I mean, what other types of cheeses are there? Uh, well, well, there's so many though. There's like sheep's sheep's milk cheese. Made never, cheese. I'll never eat anything from a sheep. Okay, well, this or is a goat. real cheese, but what about ricotta cheese? Ricotta cheese, I've had. You've had that with a little honey, though. You've had that cold. Can never with honey. Time? Okay, okay. Wow. But I've never even heard of burrata. Yeah, well, burrata, burrata, B, B U R R A T A, I believe. No. Never heard of it. The art of cheese making is referred to in ancient Greek mythology and evidence of cheese and cheese making has been found on Egyptian tomb murals dating back over 4,000 years. Oh, and obviously my favorite cheese of all time that I forgot, Cheese Whiz. Yeah, that's pro oh, yeah. That's that different than know. Burrata. That you know. Cheese may have been discovered accidentally by the practice of storing milk in containers made of the, st the stomachs of animals. Because that is, cheese is pretty much just old, dirty milk. Like, what is cheese? I don't know, but it's freaking good. That's curdling milk. Curdling milk, except the milk is curdled on purpose. Most cheese is made in factories after milk is poured into big vats. A starter culture of bacteria is added to convert the lactose into lactic acid, which is also what builds up on your exercising and why you feel pain that's in your true. muscles. That's true. Then an enzyme called the rennet is added to curdle the milk. You you don't eat cheese that's not hot or melted, and you've never to, heard of burrata cheese. It has to be melted. It's I, I could have or, I've I could have ordered us burrata cheese for lunch. Well, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. You and should I just have recently, burrata for the first time on the podcast. A hundred percent that in a pork chop. That's it. I just Behind recently, the Patreon wall. I just Patreon coming soon. I just hundred percent. Here's what we're doing with the Patreon too. We're gonna make a list so that when Patreon actually does happen, oh my it's god, it's an event, babe. An event. It's an event. It's gonna be like the Super Bowl. Speaking of Super Bowl, congrats, Tom Brady and. The Bucks. That's it. I'm gonna say congrats to Kansas City Chiefs. That's it. Congrats, Chiefs and Mahomes and everybody else, Kelsey and Hill and all those guys. What happened was yes, the Super Bowl's like tomorrow. And just in case, just in case, we got those two. Congrats to both teams for the first time in Super Bowl history. There's been a tie, tie. a tie. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yes. I was going. You know what? I would tell all you. The we, we don't know who's going to win. Obviously, we don't. Uh, it's happening momentarily, but it is a crazy story for Brady. Yes. To leave New England, they yes. don't make the playoffs. The Super Bowl is in Tampa. Yeah. He makes a run with Gronkowski in his last couple of years with a different. I mean that that is the story. You know, I mean, you know, the Chiefs are young, hungry. They yes. won last year. They have a bright future ahead of them. Yes. I don't think Brady needs any more rings, but it is a story that's about to happen. It's oh, one, that already happened. You already know. But this is like them watching in the there in the future from us. That's it. And they're looking back at time. This, it, I literally think Tom Brady not only taking his team for the first year, uh, first time uh, Tampa Bay Bucks, first year with the team to the Super Bowl. Wild but, card, mind you, facing the one seed. Wild card facing the one seed. And the first time in Super Bowl history, the the... 
home team is hosting the Super Bowl. Only that would only happen to Tom, Tom Brady. A hundred percent. Like that's literally Tom Brady. Yeah, it's it's literally the Tampa Bay Bucks and Tom Brady are the luckiest team. But then the fans, I feel like the most unlucky. The only time it ever happens in Super Bowl history, the fans can't even go to the stadium. They can't even go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about this? Tom or twenty thousand can go. Tom Brady, forty three years old, oldest active player in the NFL. I'm older than him. <laughs> wow. I'm older than every last player on the NFL. Can you believe that? That's insane. It's crazy. And I yeah. watch the NFL and I think these guys are my heroes and they could be my sons. They could be your sons. No, when you wear a jersey, when you yeah. wear, because you're a huge Steelers fan, yeah. um, when you wear a, a uh, um, Juju's jersey, Juju, yeah. I mean, that guy, he's, he's almost, he's, he's 22. It's borderline pedophilia. <laughs> I was his age when he was born. No, no, it's it's a, it's almost a crime, Sal. It is. Yeah, that's, that's what it is. No, but listen, yeah. you know, did I ever tell you the story about... Uh, I'm almost, wasted, by the way, off this whiskey. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about Aaron Rodgers? Aaron, Aaron Rodgers is a great Shout guy. out Aaron Rodgers. Shout out Aaron Rodgers. If, if Aaron Rodgers, if you're watching him, we know that you are. Yeah. Um, Aaron Rodgers is, is a great dude. I, I actually, years ago, and I mean years, I, 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 my guess is maybe, uh, I don't know, five, six years ago, uh, somehow we connected. And uh, he wrote to me on. Uh, we started to DM and talk, and, and nice guy. That's a nice. That's a nice thing to wake up to a little DM from Aaron nice? Rodgers. Great, pretty cool, right? Hundred percent. I, I like. I think. Uh, like. I like. We were following each other on Twitter, and I just like we reached out, and I was like, uh, uh, he's like, I like the show, and I'm like, yeah, you're Aaron Rodgers, so yeah. that's pretty cool. Like, yeah, holy shit, you know? right? And then we. That's like one time I got. It. That's like one time I got a DM from Drake. And I just thought it was like, I was like, oh my God. And it was like, love your comedy. And then I was like, thanks so much. And they're like, yeah, love that thing you did with Eminem. He meant to send it to Chris D'Elia. So the- oh. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever tell that to D'Elia? <laughs> no. He's got a shout out from Drake. No, no, I never told that. And you know, another thing that happened to me and Chris D'Elia, one time I got invited, I, this I told him, I got invited to go literally, flo- Sal, Flown across the country from New York City to Seattle, Washington, got paid a handsome amount to do a corporate handsome. gig. Handsome amount to do a corporate gig. Yeah. The because they had flown me out thinking I go. It's you know whatever uh, college college kids party. Somebody's twenty first birthday. The father of the girl had paid me real money, messaged me everything, flew me out, did that. I performed. The, they thought it was – he thought I was Chris D'Elia. His daughter and their friend's favorite comedian was Chris D'Elia, not me. So I get on stage. They thought I was just waiting for Chris D'Elia. 35 minutes of the show, I say goodnight. One of the girls says, when, when is Chris D'Elia coming? And then I go back and stage. I said, excuse me? What do you mean? Chris D'Elia? Yeah. And then the father says, honey, he, that's him. Christy comedy, Christy comedy. So that's happened to me twice, and you and you took a handsome, you took a handsome amount. I took Delia's money. Did they? Did I they, told him, and they, he was like, "Hey, buddy, yeah, <laughs> keep it. Did, I got did, plenty of money." Did they? Were they happy in the end, or were they like, "Fine, here's the thing"? But I, not- I got to be honest with you. The first twenty minutes, I was struggling. I didn't know why I was doing the A material. <laughs> you know, I was like, "These usually wow. work." Yeah. So that's that. Two times that happened. Damn, yeah. man. Yeah, so 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 I'm talking to Aaron Rodgers, right? This is okay. This is right. every single thing I'm telling you, not a single exaggeration. Yeah. We're going back. You don't and forth. exaggerate. No, you I, don't exaggerate. I really try not You're to. Con- you you every time you tell me a story, you never have. I most I usually have to say, I promise you, you I'm telling you. I, I take a lot of license. Yeah. You, te- it's pretty straight on. You're one of my most trustworthy friends no, and the homeless pimp. Thank you. And whoever else well, is in the room. Keep honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you gotta extrapolate a little too. That's part of it. Yeah. But this this I'm telling you right now, bare bones of the story. So we start. Trading, you know, messages and everything. He's he's actually a really funny dude. Uh, right away, we were like kind of like busting each other's chops a little bit. It was like that kind of vibe. So I go to L.A. I'm, by chance in L.A., I'm visiting an old friend of mine. He's like, how you been? How you doing? What's up? What's new? And we're just bullshitting. And I say, oh, you know, like he said, have you? I think he asked me, like, what's the coolest thing that's happening as of late? And I'm like, oh, I'll tell you one. I've been talking to Aaron Rodgers. Isn't that great? Wild, crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. Funny guy, nice guy. Get the hell out of here. I swear to God, like the Aaron Rodgers. Pretty cool. He's a fan. He likes the show, all that stuff. Wow, wow, great. So then we'll walk uh so then we're walking and my friend's like, let's go get a coffee. He works right. at shout out Dom Di Bartolomeo of of, of of Domenico's Foods out in LA. I met him. You know him. Yeah. He works at the Beverly Hills Wine and Cheese Shop, but he also has his own line of foods. Great and food. Just look up Domenico's uh Italian foods on Instagram and check out Dom Di Bartolomeo. So he's my friend since 
high school. I've known him 31 years. So right. he's like, let's go get a, a cappuccino or whatever. So we'll walk into this little place he knows. And he's like, uh, and people are saying hello to me and stuff. So he's like, oh, that that must, does it get annoying? Do you like, right. how do you feel about that? I was like, it's not bad. It, it's, it's par for the course, you know? And he's like, I'm like, sometimes it could be a little intrusive because if people won't really want to talk to you, they don't realize that like you can't stop for everyone. It's yeah. taking up a lot of your time. Yeah. My favorite interaction is when someone just yells from a grocery like, Sally! Sally! And I go, hey, buddy! By the way, can I, keep going. can I just real yeah. quick, we'll get back to the story, but just because you reminded me, two days ago, I swear to God, I was driving, so, I was walking, somebody driving by in a van was stopped at a red light and I'm crossing the street and they go, oh, oh, what's up? They said, you got that podcast. You got the podcast with, with the Joker. I said, yeah. He goes, yeah. I go, he goes, I love it. He goes, what, what's it called? Uh, uh, hey, something, you and Joe Gatto. You and Joe Gatto. <laughs> and he's going, you and Joe Gatto. He goes, you and Joe Gatto. Which, I love it. I love it. And then, and then I just kept walking. I was like, absolutely. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's hysterical. I swear to God. Uh-huh. He goes, you and Joe Gatto. And then he, was, and then he just went through the light. <laughs> Um, so, so I, I tell him, you know, what I really, I really prefer when someone's just like, hey. Oh, we're pulling up, we're pulling up DMs with Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, yeah. Patreon, if you want to hear the real shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you want to see story. the, if you want to see the pics that were sent. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I, this is, this is truthfully, I, so, so. You have the proof. I told, no, but not yeah. that, this timing, where do you hear this? Right. Because this is, balls will be blown off. I you can't should, wait to get this, my balls blown I, off. You should have no balls after this. Uh, well, listen, I'm already, as I've told you many times, I'm already kind of angling to get the sex change. Yes. That's why I'm doing this podcast. Yes. If you blow my balls off with the story, halfway save there. save you money. Exactly. So here's what happens. So I tell him, uh, my favorite interaction is when people just don't even break stride and go, hey, you doing? And I say, what do you say? <laughs> yeah. And I keep going. Love so it. I'm telling you, well, I should call him up. He. Uh, I mean, first of all, if you call Aaron Rodgers right now, I'll come. So. <laughs> <laughs> I meant Dom, but sure. Oh, so, oh, oh Dom, so same. Dude, Dude, 20 seconds, 20 seconds after I said that, a car drives by here. Ba, 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 ba. Say, I go, hey, what do you say? Uh, and yeah. the car keeps driving. I go, there you go. I go, that right there, my ideal situation. Beautiful. He goes, all right. Yeah. We get to the coffee place, order a couple of cappuccinos, sit down. We're drinking the coffee, just shooting the shit. My pocket buzzes. I go, I look, I get a DM from Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers. In that moment, he goes, what are you, too good to say hello? I said, what are you talking about? He goes, that was me that just drove by in the car yelling at you on Rodeo Drive. I was like, you're fucking kidding me right now. He's like, no, that was me. I go, dude, come back. Yeah. I, I, I look at my friend. I go, you're not going to believe this. The person that just screamed, hey, what do you say? <laughs> drive by, that was my idea. That was Aaron Rodgers. Was Super Bowl winning MVP and we Aaron Rodgers. We were talking Rogers. about him. Yes. He drove by in a car and beeped. He's not from L.A. I'm not from L.A. We were both visiting. He was going to a meeting. I was visiting a friend. I was speaking about him. He drove past me in a car in the state that both of us are known not to be from and said and beeped at me. I couldn't freaking believe it. Can you believe that? Do me a favor right now. Feel Go deep. Go. Yeah. Tell me if you feel my balls. There's no balls there. Blown off. <laughs> Blown away. Blown <laughs> off. I mean, this you, kid just. Saved you money. I saved you money. There's, does it take a step up from here? That's because my balls. I don't have any balls. I, I, was, just, I was just gonna read you. I mean, that's insane. He, he, this is okay. This this particular date was February 27, two thousand seventeen. So four years ago, basically. February twenty seven, two thousand seventeen. That was me. That that was me in the BMW that just yelled at you in Beverly Hills. Thanks for the wave sla- the wave slash blow off. <laughs> so I was like, all right, buddy. Ready. <laughs> I didn't even look at him. <laughs> Holy uh, smokes. What are you doing out here? And then we go on. I said, in all caps, that was you. Oh, I don't have my glasses, which I didn't. Did he come back? No, he, uh, yes, it was me. Way, so funny. Bo- he was going to come see me do stand up, actually, but he had a 5 30 appointment. At this point, it was already uh, 3 30, so he couldn't come back. Got Performing it. tonight, tomorrow, and then after that, he blew me off. But God bless him. Uh, no, he's, he busted. Did he leave my, you on scene? He busted my chops about the Jaden tattoo. And then after that, for like two years, every Mother's Day and Father's Day, I, text, I texted him Happy Mother's Day and Happy Father's Day. And, and, he, and he always responds, Thank you, thank yeah, you. Always, and yeah. Same to you. Yeah, yeah. He's Does he great. give a shit for being a Steelers fan or no? I don't know if we've ever talked about that. Yeah. But yeah, I was rooting. I, I always am rooting for him whenever I can. Shout out Aaron Rodgers. Sure. Mother's Day or Father's Day? Because oh, yeah, I just thought it was like I just I don't know it was just uh, instinctively I was like we we break we break each other's shoes a little bit so I'll just text him and because he he we joke he was he was he showed me that he 
he would understand that joke. And he he does. Yeah, you know, hold on. Sal always does stuff like that. <laughs> remember, you you always you send my dad my father birthday. You send him a birthday gift once. Remember, yes. it was like January when I told you my dad's birthday is August first. You sent him a, a sent gift him on a his gift birthday. Card. Wait, hold on. You know what's funny about what I did with your dad? Yeah, I go um I go your dad's birthday's coming up. I go, I'm going to send him a gift card in the mail, right? Yeah. So you you you're like yes, and I go you know who do I address it to? And you wrote Cuzzo. Yeah. In a text message to me. You're right. Just address it to Cuzzo. But I read that as like for some reason no relation dad, to Lizzo by the way yeah, yeah. yeah. but I read it as like like I, I, I was like I thought it was maybe like your dad's like nickname or whatever or yeah. what he goes by yeah uh, I thought it was like his last name yeah. like no I don't know I know his last name is Stefano, but like I don't know I just took it as an Italian. I don't know. Pimp anyway, walked out. Pimps walked off the set for some reason. I, I wrote. I, I sent it to your dad, and I wrote Cuzzo yeah. on, as the as right. the mailing address. Right. I wrote Cuzzo, Cuzzo as his name, and then the rest of it. And remember, like two months later, it got sent back to me. I sent you a picture of yeah. it. Yeah. I bet you, if you look in your text messages, it's the thing I sent. No, him. but I got a new phone uh, since then. But I got yeah. to upload my stuff to the iCloud. The Aaron Rodgers thing is is yeah. It makes you happy Mother's Day, Aaron. He wrote back, same to you, Sal. How's the tattoo treating you? You're a great mother. <laughs> and then, and then, and, and then, and then on Father's Day, I wrote, "Happy Father's Day, Aaron." And he's like, "Thanks so much for the Father's Day wishes. Meant to say Happy Father's Day to you too. Hope you got a message from Jaden Sunday. You deserve it." So, so Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, I just want to say, he's a funny notch, guy, top notch guy, top notch guy, top notch. Get him on. Let's get him on the podcast. Sure. <laughs> you know who died? Who? You, you know, recently Siegfried died of Siegfried and Roy. Siegfried of Oh yes, Siegfried, I did know that. Siegfried is Roy dead already? Roy got. Eaten by the tiger, no, but right? He lived, but then Roy died not l a little while back. Complications from the tiger? No. Okay. I don't know. No, he they're didn't both die. dead. He didn't die at the hands of the tiger, Mordecai, or something like that. Yeah, but, Sick. but what? God, Roy Horn, Roy Horn. But God bless. But here's what I thought was peculiar. You ready? Did you know Siegfried and Roy? If that was their first name, their last name? I I personally always thought that Siegfried and Roy weren't either one of their names. They just came up with a stage name and they said Siegfried and Roy. Real names. Uh, they were actual life partners as well as magic partners. Did you know that? They were in a homosexual relationship? They were two lifelong homosexuals in a relationship together that also dealt with lions on the side. By the way, that's insane to me. And isn't that, a, isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. Like, you just get to make money and, uh, may, and, and and do all this great stuff, see the world with your life partner, with your it's husband. Like, it's like what we're venturing It's like what now. we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's like what we're doing. Yeah, it is. And and it's kind of like, yeah. It's and just a taste, though. We don't have tigers and we don't have $200 million. And we're not having sex at yeah, night. No. But if you take just those three. But if you go on the Patreon. There's no difference between me and you. No. If you take no sex, take away 200 mil and tigers. We're Sick Freedom Roy. We're Sick Freedom Roy. Yeah, yeah. But do you know what their names are? That has their real names. Roy is Roy Horn. Roy Horn, regular which guy. Which is like two two single syllables. Boom, boom. It's very Are like they American? Roy Horn. Are they American? No, I think they're German. German and his name's Roy Horn? Well, let me tell you about Siegfried's last name. You What's ready? Siegfried's name? This threw me for a loop, and I kind of understand why they went with their first names only. Okay. Bendelbaum. <laughs> Sieg no, totally joke. Oh. <laughs> Fishbacher. Fishbacher? Siegfried Fishbacher and Roy Sieg Horn. Siegfried Fishbacher. One can only imagine if they went by Horn and Fishbacher if they would have seen the same successes. <laughs> yeah, do you, that's one of those things when you go into the office and then to your new manager, go Fishbacher, Fishbacher and Horn. What do you think? No, Fishbacher and Horn, attorneys of law. <laughs> yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. 1 800 yeah. and 18. No, I'm singing the 1 800 mattress. I'm just trying to sing Selena and Barnes, which is. Which, eight, 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 eight. Yeah, but by the way, Selena R.I.P. Injury attorneys. Stand by, 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 boop. Local injury attorneys that you guys might not know. I don't know. Maybe and Barnes injured. died in a plane God crash. God bless. God shout bless. Out, and I got to be honest with you. Shout out Selena and Barnes. Barnes died in a plane crash. Selena put a sign up with just Selena real quick. Yeah, he did. He did. But what are you going to do? That's a good point. I mean, what you, I mean, you're going to do it. I mean, it's not, we're not judging here to judge Selena and get a lawsuit slapped on us. Yeah, that's the last thing I want to do after seeing yeah. the commercials. So they, they transition from magic to... Tigers bringing tigers around? What? No, wait. You Siegfried and Roy. Are we talking about Selino and Barnes? Selino and Barnes are two accent attorneys that <laughs> that made their made their living in New York that have blown up. Is it that would be on? a funny thing that I'm it, stuck on the lion trainer. Fishbacher and Horn. Yeah, <laughs> they they fish horn. One of them was dealing in lions and one was dealing in magic, and then they met. And then they just combine the two. This yeah. is what I read. They were, by the way, Siegfried and Roy discovered in Paris, who asked them to come to Vegas in 1967. And this is just thrown into the Wikipedia. They spent some time in Puerto Rico and may have purchased property there. 
<laughs> I, don't just, know. I mean, they're doing a deep dive. I don't know what the Porter point of that Baca. was, but they just wanted to tell you that Puerto Rico, They, of course, they spent time there, and they may or may not have purchased property there. Find out on the Patreon what the answer is. Here's what I want from our listeners. I want you to take things that we say and apply them in your life to make your life unique and special. For example, in the future, when Siegfried and Roy comes up in your life, it's going to come up. Right. Because everyone has heard and or said the name Siegfried and Roy in their lives. In seven years from now, you might overhear someone talking about Siegfried and Roy. I've never heard of Barada cheese. I've heard of Siegfried and Roy. Correct. Yeah. And what I want you to do is, whenever that is for you, it's a ticking time bomb for all of you. If it's in a month, in 10 years, in 20 years, when someone brings up Siegfried and Roy, I want you to go, you know they purchased property in Puerto Rico? Yeah. I want you to have that information yeah. handy, and it's factual, and I want you to say it. Yeah. So Siegfried, so so. Oh, Roy, Roy wasn't born Roy. Check that out. Can you want to you want to take a stab at that name? His name was Uwe Ludwig Horn. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe it's you, you Ludwig Horn. Uwe. Uwe. It's spelled U W E. Well, there you go. Listen, they had a 2005 animated sitcom. They had a sitcom called Father of the Pride. So you guys like are a Father lot of the Bride. You guys, are, you're like more like Siegfried Fischbacher and Roy Horn than you realize. Than I realize. You had an animated thing about fatherhood. I had an animated thing about fatherhood. I had a. Pi they actually made it to air though in 2004. <laughs> I'm still. I was Chrissy Pilots. I'm just so confused. So they, as open micers, would bring tigers around. What do you mean open micers, Pimp? Like, Pimp's showing his age right now. Pimp is 19 and a half. I don't know if he ever yeah. told you guys that. <laughs> yeah. He, Pimp is 19 and a half. He knows tech like a. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't know. Pimp doesn't know who. Pimp thinks Sick of Freedom Roy right now are open mic comedians who started toying with Wait, tigers. Are you saying that? Or are you saying when they were nobody they knew were, who they were? They were, were they mikers. just coming out with "We got lions"? How do you transition? Like, how to, do you get into the so line? What thing? I had heard was, and I don't want to mix them up, but I think one of them, like let's call a fishbacher, was into magic. He met Roy. Roy was heavy into lions. He was heavy into it. And then they were like, let's do, let's combine them together. I read this in the wake of Siegfried's passing. I read an article maybe in the Times or something. Right. Yeah. Do you Wait, are there still questions? I'm happy to field them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just what's the logistics of bringing tigers on the road? Yeah, can't be. Oh, I mean, well, well, they weren't really on the road. The whole show was in Las Vegas. Well, that was after they made their. They made their. They've been on Las Vegas though, but for thirty or forty years. I think they're worth like like a couple of billion dollars. Oh well, yeah. And then in two thousand three, they did the show at the Mirage, which I never got a chance to see. Did you ever see it? The show I did not. No, That's, yeah, I we can watch it, it on YouTube. Shame. They uh, allegedly in October third, two thousand three, great Montecor, year. Montecor, not Mordecai. Um, Montecor attacked Roy Horn. Um, because Horn held the microphone up to Montecure's mouth and told him to say hello to the audience, which Montecure found that offensive, and responded, which lions could, if I asked you to say hello on your line, you may or may not do what Montecore did. Montecore then responded by biting Horn's sleeve, and Horn swatted tiger and barked release, and then realized quickly that this tiger doesn't know English, and then Horn <laughs> ripped, and then Horn ripped its arm out of the tiger's mouth, and Montecure moved to stand over him. So Montecure bit into Horn's neck and dragged him off stage. Yeah, I know that. And I think there was footage at the time, although recently when I read the article and I searched for the footage again, sue me, is I, I didn't find it. So they might have stripped it from the internet because, then, it, you know, the warning, it is, it is something. To, it and is, then, it's a sight. And then here, too, because, you know, obviously, as we mentioned, as we mentioned, um, God uh, bless these guys. Siegfried and Roy were in a, in a homosexual relationship. Montecore was uh, no different because it says trainers got the tigers to release uh, Horn by spraying the tiger with CO2 because that tiger was flaming. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we now know from episode four of Hey Babe, there can be gay animals. There can be gay animals, and Montecure was a gay, gay, gay animal that could only be stopped by, you know, getting the flames out with CO2, and then that was the last resort available. But Horn's uh, spine... He he got his he's got a severed spine, massive blood loss, and injured all. He got, it ended his career. Montecore ended his career. Yeah. So and then he also had a stroke either before or after Montecore dragged him off stage. So I mean, this bad news. Yeah, but he recovered, and they spent some years after that happily. And uh, I think they 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 retired from the show in Vegas. But anyway, shout out to Siegfried and Roy. <laughs> um, and Horn. here's here's the thing. Here's an interesting thing. Here's how you know the kid loved animals. Roy Horn said, Montecure is a great cat. Make sure no harm comes to Montecure. He actually saved my life by trying to drag me to safety after I had a stroke. Yeah, and maybe so, that's, that's what he that's, said. You know, and, and he knows better than us about that. If he had the stroke? I mean, from, me, from my point of view, 
I don't think that's what happened, but also he's the professional. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Right. What came first, right. the, stro- the stroke or the bite? I mean, Horn, I mean, there's got, you think Horn, I hope a Horn and and Fish and Siegfried, like they had like a playful relationship. You got to think in any of their sexual escapades together in the four decades that they loved each other. Right. You think, you think Roy made any jokes about blowing his horn and things like yeah. that? Yeah. Time to get the, you know, it's time to... The horn section needs a tune yeah, up, yeah, to, to something my, like that. I'm, I would have. I mean, hey, you got to. I mean, you got to be playful, right? I'm not I mean, going to toot my own horn here. Get on your knees, kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 zero disrespect. I'm trying to get into like the real the sex Six role play. Roy. No, I'm just saying, like you know, you have a partner. You, when you're playful in in, in in the throes of passion, it's always sure. fun. You know, always fun. It, it makes you feel closer together. It's not just you're not just going in there and doing a job. No, you know, you're still your normal selves, your normal personalities. I wonder if horn. Right, who's a playful fellow, and then never, uh, never did double entendres with his last name and blowing, you know, you know. I, I don't see. I don't. I'd like see, to believe it. I don't see why. But then also, we're assuming that they're speaking in English when they're in the throes. I mean, if they're German guys, they might be speaking in, Ger- in the German language having sex. That is true. So we like to have a lot of. We, sometimes we like to have fun on the ads. Uh, but this one, I'm just going to read word for word, at least the first part. Hey, fellows, we're in the thick of winter and the storms are brewing. It looks like one to three inches are in the forecast when you trim that hibernation bush that's taking place in your pants. <laughs> Luckily, our partners at Manscaped specialize in products to make sure you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs. Manscaped is here to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience, offering precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. I'll, I'll tell you what. The lawnmower 3.0 trimmer, I'm being dead serious. <laughs> it says the best hygiene tool for the modern man. They're a thousand percent right. I have that lawnmower 3.0. The, it's literally to the skin shave. I, I no nick, nothing. It's so, so my balls right now look like Michael Jordan. They're, I'm telling you, really? Yes. Your balls look like a six year old black man. Yes. Wow. From the lawnmower 3.0 championship, six rings, Michael Jordan. That's what my balls look like from the wow. lawnmower 3.0. 3.0. Now let me tell you something. I wonder what happened to the people who who had the 1.0 and the 2.0. I don't know what happened to them. God speed. You God need, if you have that and you love it, you got to know that the 3.0 is what you got, but even better, right? They have That's another thing called the crop preserver, preserver, which is an <laughs> anti chafing ball deodorant that make your balls smell nice and make you feel like your testes are walking in a winter wonderland. Oh, that's always fun. I That's love what Winter it is. Wonderland. All you got to do is go to manscaped.com slash hey babe. You're going to get 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com slash hey babe. And uh, uh, we just want to say thanks, thanks Manscaped, Manscaped for, making for making our, our winter, winter wieners, wieners look, look so great. great. <laughs> so Sal, I really, the last like couple of weeks, I've been really having like a rock hard penis mm. for most of the day. Interesting. Because, because I've been using blue chill. Mm. I've been using because I had those problems when I I couldn't get my penis up and nothing I do it just my dick would it just wouldn't go up. But now I've been going to bluechew.com and I put in the promo code Hey Babe mm. and I've been getting it for free. No, that's not nothing in this life is free. Well, you get five dollars off shipping. No, I that's think. not true at all. <laughs> you spend five dollars for shipping and you get it for free. You spend five dollars. I was setting you up to be like, no, there is things in life that you get for free, and then I thought you were going to hit them with the great deal that we have for them, but. We floundered, and we're not going to edit this out because we're men of the people. Because we're men of the people, and I'm proud to stand by my erection. And if you just go to bluechew.com, promo code Hey Babe, yes. Then what exactly you're going to you, you pay try it for shipping. free? You you get your first shipment free, and and then you just pay five beans for the shipping. That's, That's it. it. So you're paying for the shipping, you're getting the product for free. You can't beat that. That you can't beat. Think and about the, the the ads we do. Ten percent off, twenty percent off. No, this, that, the other. This no. is free. Free promo code. Hey, babe, pay five dollars shipping. Bluechew.com. That's it. What's up? It's Chrissy Standups. Listen, February twelfth, thirteenth, Valentine's Day weekend. I'll be doing Atlantic City, New Jersey, the Celebrity Theater. Then February twenty fifth to the twenty seventh, hot, 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 Phoenix, Arizona, House of Comedy. Then just added March sixth, the Vogel, Red Bank, New Jersey. We just added two shows there. Go get them. The tickets sold out real quick last time. Go to chrisdcomedy.com for tickets that's chrisdcomedy.com for tickets i'm chrissy standups let's have some fight yun. possible and yeah you're right maybe oh yeah joe exotic i mean joe exotic doesn't let's be honest i'm a fan of joe exotic he doesn't hold the candle to sick for him roy no he doesn't do magic no but he's with the animals so and the tigers yeah he thought he was going to get out of jail with Trump, but with it didn't Trump, happen. Didn't, get didn't happen. They had a limo outside. That was a pardon that did not come through. What can you? What? What? So now he's got to spend you know a lot more time in jail. But I mean, what can you do? Best now. Let me ask you this question real quick. Uh, you have to pick one person's hair. Joe Exotic Dog, the Bounty Hunter. Who do you go with? 
I'm gonna put. Oh, 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 they're both. I'm gonna put three of them variations in. Variations of the same cut. I'm gonna put a third one in to yeah. make it even harder. Yeah. You have to pick one haircut. You have to pick one right now. Think of it as like an impractical jokes challenge. You have to pick one. Joe Exotic, Dog the Bounty Hunter, Long Island Medium. Who are you going with? <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of the three. Like, Long Island Medium. Has Teresa that. Caputo. God bless her. She has the. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen her recently. I wonder if let's pull her like, up. The one you're talking about is like the bob cut, maybe. Uh, uh, we're gonna put up right here. This is the one I'd like. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So we go in Long Island Medium. Wow. Dog the Bounty Hunter or Joe Exotic. You have to. Pick one, go for it. Well, Teresa Caputo, I grew up around that haircut. Yeah. I grew up in Staten Island. That haircut was a bound. That's Staten Island Mountain uh, haircut. I had to choose one. Well, I mean, I want to say that her skew's feminine at, the, at least. Well, you know who has that haircut? Chris Angel. <laughs> yeah, Chris yeah. Angel also has that haircut. That's it. That's a, yeah. Just, if it's black, it's Chris Angel. Yeah, right. Oh, my God. Someone asked <laughs> actually put Dog and, and Joe Exotic together. Uh, where do I go? You know what? Because Dog's is back. I think I want to go forward. I think I would might I might take Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic looks like I'm I'm taking t chances at the salon. Right. <laughs> but Dog looks like I did this at home myself and I stand by it. Right. So I think I want to be the guy who like, oh, I told him to spruce me up. I wanted to try something different, which I think is Joe Exotic. Then this is me born and raised. This is who I am. That'll be my haircut in my casket. School. I, solid, solid answer. I think Joe Exotic's in a phase. Solid. Right. And you, you're you like, know who you are more. So you'll be go dog the bounty hunter. No. No, you're saying. Wait, you're saying I, you I don't think I'd take dogs. I think dogs is more like, this is all I know. <laughs> I that, but there's comfort and calmness in that. That is true. <laughs> this is who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like I feel like with Dog the Bounty Hunter, all I'd have to do is, if I just cut the back of his hair, he'd have a normal haircut. Where Joe Exotic, you have to, you, you, he has you really you have to shave Joe Exotic's head and start over. Right, 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 You right, have right. to just kind of wipe it off the map and say, let's just begin. By the way, Long Island Medium and I have the same lawyer, entertainment lawyer, and there have been multiple times. I know her daughter. Yeah, when I've been, really? Yeah. Very interesting. Does she all, is she also a medium? No. Right. But uh, they, had, She's a small. they had the show, and I think that the whole family Sorry, was just cut that part out. What's that? I said, because you said, you know, her daughter. I said, oh, she's a small. No, I said, is she a medium? And you said, no, I said, is she a small? No, don't cut that. But That's terrific. <laughs> Let me tell you something right now. I love a dad joke as much as a regular joke because I like to try to make the most corny joke. And to me, that's a success when you do it. I've been doing them too much, though, lately. I'm a professional stand-up comedian. You're a dad. But because we haven't been having that much stage time because of the pandy wandy, yeah. I've been I've been floating a few dad jokes out as, but as, you know, as regular on stand-up. And it's, you know, and people- Oh, you've been doing dad jokes at stand-up. Just, you know, but I'm just saying like things like that. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, if we were doing stand-up still, I don't, I think in my head I wouldn't say, oh, don't do the small joke. But because- because there's no other time to joke, I said, oh, the Long Island Small, you know, it's just, what can you do? I stand, <laughs> the way Dog dog the Bounty Hunter stands by his haircut, I stand by the joke, even though I'm not proud of you it. You should stand by the joke, and you should be proud of it. Um, Long Island Medium, real quick, and I have the same lawyer. Is that the guy from the Goonies? The guy from the Goonies. Shout out Jeff Cohen. Yes. And there's been a couple of times where we've been on calls, and he's had to go because he said, oh, I got to go. I have a meeting with the Long Island Medium. And he, he'd say that. And that multi Why and does he drop the before name? I didn't know that professional it, business. Before I, didn't know, before I didn't know that it was the Long Island Medium, uh, uh, before I didn't know that he was his lawyer, I thought he was having, like, he was talking to the Long Island Medium, like, paying for his services, <laughs> talking to ghosts. And I was like, my lawyer's a real kook. But it was they were having meetings, like, about big business. Business. Long Island Media makes a I, lot I of money. For a thirty minute seance. Yeah. Um, do, do you think the guy I want to call him by is respectful? Is it Jeff? You said Jeff. You think Jeff is sick and tired? I'd be calling the guy from the Goonies because if he is and he's watching it, we know he is. Just like everybody else, we sure mentioned. Sure is. Um, well, Jeff actually might be. No, no offense, please. I, I actually I've heard that he's a million people I know is lawyer. Jeff Cohen. But I don't mean to call you because I can't stand that too. Like I, one of the best entertainment, best entertainment lawyer. Uh, I've ever had. Have you guys seen this new trend? That's no, going? please no, no, please oh, the no. The verified bad crest. That's not real. Wait, real quick. Let me just say with Jeff Cohen, real quick, because yeah. um, you said, did he ever get? You know, uh, he you was know, the kid, right? The right, kid, the, the truffle shuffle. Yeah, yeah. So when I first signed with him, we had a we had a meeting uh, in his office, and he said, "Look, he there's said, a picture of it in his office." Well, yeah, no, 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 no. He no. said, "You know, you know, you know, truffle shuffle. You know, from the Goonies and oh, all that." Man, I said, "Yeah." He goes, "Listen, I'll do this. I do it. for all my clients." Said, "I do it. I'll just do it once." He goes, "I'll do the truffle shuffle for you, and then that's it. You can't ask me again." Lifts up his shirt, does the truffle shuffle, tucked his shirt back in, sat down, went over the contract. No. Yes. Ask anybody who's Jeff. You didn't ask. 
No, he, he 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 volunteered and then did it. Did it, and he's ripped now, so it doesn't even look. Yes. He's got abs. So ask anybody who's 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 a client of, of his. They all, <laughs> you were like, listen, you don't have to. He do knocks that. it out in the first meeting. Yeah, which is great because then I never thought to ask again. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you'd be just thinking about one a day that I could ask him. And I was, by the way, I was never going to ask. <laughs> right. <you're> right. <laughs> <laughs> So this now you like, can get your house verified. Is that what we're talking about? Bluecheckhomes.com? What does that even mean, though? What are we talking oh, about here, Okay, Pimp? you can now get a verified badge crest on your Bay Area home if you're an influencer, public figure, or represent a brand, bluecheckhomes.com. Why? That is, is the worst thing I've... That is right now. I'm telling you right now. This is the beginning of the apocalypse. Somebody's going to get That's killed. The beginning of the the goddamn apocalypse. Yeah. That they would put a disgusting, corny blue check on their homes and identify themselves and their homes and their privacy <laughs> as someone who influences or is a public. By leader, the way, look at the house. You do. Pull, what What does it even matter? By yeah, and it's also like pull, pull up. I mean, you know, no disrespect at all, but like pull up the house on the right. That one, like in the picture we have. I mean, this is an attached kind of piece of shit house. It's like you're verified, <laughs> what but are you, you got. Doing? I mean. I mean what are we doing? You live in a two floor walk up here. That's crazy that you're putting a blue check. No as a disrespect crest on the front. No disrespect. There it is. Put some disrespect on. Guys, it. what are you doing? Why does this hold value with you? What is? Why what's... are you letting the people that are passing by in a car know that on social media someone verified you? What does that even mean? What is the point of it, pimp? Do we have any idea? People you're are in... just afraid of it actually catching on. Right now, it seems like somebody's just throwing it out there. It's, a, it's been spotted though. Can you click on bluecheckhomes.com? We're giving them. Would you ever in a million? Never. The blue verified badge on your house lets people outside know that you're an authentic public figure. Why would you want to do that? You want your home to be your safe space and your privacy. To re- yeah, to receive the blue check crest, there must be someone authentic and notable actively living in the house. Who <laughs> gives a sh- What does that do? Besides identify to someone that you may be on a social media app. By the way, to be verified, you don't have to be famous. You have to know somebody at Instagram or Twitter. Like, what does that even do, though? That alerts someone that on social media, someone acknowledged that you have a business. It's like not safe, actually. Yeah, like, what a weird freaking thing to do. Man, people have their priorities messed up. Just to be fair, put me on the waiting list. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like it just helps people target you to rob you. Yeah, target you. How much money does that cost, too? What is that, thousands of dollars? It's unsightly as well. It's It's a big blue check on the front of your home. It's gross. I mean, mean, are we going to start the application? You better believe we are. Um, All right, we got to get it. We're going to do it. We'll get get one. That's what we do. That's why you guys, you know. Maybe you hang it right out the window. Yeah, but we'll hang it right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's put it right here. With freaking studios verified. Um, So wait a second. All right, we're signing up for the blue check. But but wait, we started off talking. We started off talking about you had a bad night last night. Oh, my God, dude. So I went to Grace. Went to Grace. And I had some Trader Joe's organic mozzarella. Okay. In the fridge, shredded. So I went in there. It's like two in the like two in the morning. I I had a I didn't really have a snack. I didn't. I usually you have. You weren't a, you weren't waking up to pee because you don't wake up to pee. I don't wake up to pee at all. Never. Never. Never had. And by the way, you getting up to get a snack. There's a lot of things that have to happen. You have to unhook your face mask. No, no, no. I, I uh, say I wasn't sleeping. Okay. I was in bed watching TV. There's a difference. You know, and then I was like, I had a never little snack and I had a little rumbling and I didn't want to go overboard. So I was like, what, what's something I could do that will satiate me? Right. So I took a scoop, put it in my mouth. I mentioned my nuts through my pocket, but just know that it's, I'm just, it, I, I'm sorry. Oh, now. Yeah. You got nuts now all of a sudden? Oh, that's right. They came back. They grew back. This guy's lying to me and you to our faces. They grew back. It's well documented that I blew them off with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, you're right. Didn't Aaron Rodgers take your nuts? I, I'm, I'm scratching my puss. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Um, I, I take a clump of shredded organic fresh ones from TJ's. Like it? I put it in my mouth. I'm chewing it. And I'm like, oh, delicious. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't taste too good. This tastes weird. Oh, that tastes very weird. What am I eating? I look down. Huge lump of green mold. Oh. I ate uh, a huge lump of green freaking Swallowed mold. it? Swallowed it. So then what? Were you just waiting, panicking? To I, w- I was like, ah, ah. I was just alone, like making noises like that in the kitchen. And I looked and like some of it's good and some of it's bad because it's shredded. I saw it and I saw a big green lump and I'm like, that's what I just tasted. And I started dry heaving. I opened up the uh, faucet and I put my mouth tongue on it and I kept going, like taking water and swishing it and spitting and swishing it and spinning it out. But it already got digested. I tasted the mold. I swallowed the mold. The mold is in my stomach now. Still in your stomach right now? It has well, to be. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's in, but, but it you was. Have no, but, but nothing. It tasted disgusting. And I was like, that tastes peculiar. And then it kept, I kept getting more prominently tasting but the mold. But isn't like bad, like what happens if you eat mold? Can you die? 
What happens if you eat cheese with mold on it? Probably nothing, though. Oh. Some people eating mold can cause allergic reactions. In rare cases, could be poisonous, even causing vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, internal bleeding. So just in case, be sure and cut the mold off. Now, that was where I was going with this. Right. Okay. After I ate it and I had an adverse reaction, I spit and I dry heaved and I rinsed my mouth out. I had the shivers. And I actually opened a small can of Diet Coke for taste. Right. To get it out of the way. Birth control. Meal yes. three. Meal three. So, uh... But I have done this. I have seen mold on a piece of bread or a piece of cheese, and I've cut the mold out and eaten the rest of the cheese business as usual. Is that, the, is that am I a lunatic? Have you done that? I'll, Does it stand to reason if mold is forming somewhere, it could be forming elsewhere, but it's not visible yet, and it could be inside? Because I've just carved the cheese right off, and I've gone ahead and eat the rest of the cheese, and I've done that my whole life. And I'm someone who is... A germ guy. Sure. I don't like things like sure. that. I get. I don't have a, a, a strong constitution. I have. A, you know. I have a stomach of steel, but I'm queasy in my brain. Right. So for me, you wouldn't think I would do that, but I've done it, and and I only realized that after I ate the mold. Right. I was like, well, I cut mold out and eat the cheese. I wonder if I should even be doing that. Your thoughts? Do you do it? Do you not do it? Am I a psychopath, lunatic? Do you think this is something that everybody does? I I think I don't think you're a psychopath, or lunatic. I don't. I do think it's maybe something. That a lot of people may do. Me personally, if I had moldy cheese, which I don't really have that much, I don't eat cold cheese to begin with. So but you let's say you, you can't even be in the situation because you only eat hot cheese. But let's say I, I've I've seen moldy bread. Yeah. If there's a piece of mold, bag goes out. I'll I'll roof it. I mean, I'll throw it out on the garbage. But I mean, I literally, if we were walking in the street and I bought bread and I bought bread that I looked and had mold in, I may genuinely. Throw it on the roof. Really? I would never in a million years cut really? out a piece of the bread or cut around the cheese, get the mold off, and then melt the cheese. I would never in a so, million years do that. So I am, I'm trash. I won't take medicine or drink milk a day after the expiration that I won't do it. I'd rather just go buy new but, milk and go buy new no, medicine. No, that's, that's the devil's biggest scam. That's the devil's biggest scam right there. <laughs> First of all, milk, just smell it. Milk and eggs. Eggs, they take and go three to four weeks past the expiration. Really? Yeah, this is just Big Farm wanting you to turn over. What about, what milk, about milk, Tylenol? Milk, I smell it. Milk smells good. I'm, I do it. But Tylenol and yeah. vitamins and things like that, they all put a one-year stamp on it. I believe that at most, maybe you lose a small percentage of potency. Boom. That's, that's it. Read it. it. It's true. It's true. The effectiveness of a drug may decrease over time, but much of the original potency still remains even a decade after the expiration date, excluding nitroglycerin, insulin, and liquid antibiotics. Most medications are as long-lasting as the ones tested by the military. You see what I'm saying? They just want you to buy new shit. They want you to go back to the doctor. They want you to pay a copay again. They want the insurance to get it up. You keep taking medicine. Well, don't love it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Throw your medicine out at the expiration date. And then if you want to do something, you you decide to do it. I didn't tell you to do anything. There's been I began. <laughs> there's been multiple times in my life where I've been sick and then went into the cupboard, Chrissy Cupboard, yeah. and looked for medicine and seen that the medicine was not that much past the expiration date, maybe a year, a couple of months past the expiration date, and went back into bed and stayed sick and wouldn't take the medicine what do you think until I could go the next day. I don't know. Well, I don't know what would happen. Your, talk me through what your thought process is. I don't even do this. Do you think that, that it might have like, um, medi like scientifically expired and then possibly become poisonous? I, I don't know what it is, but with medicine, uh, perfect example. A month ago, uh, oh, a month ago, a week ago, I had a really bad stomach ache. I had a really bad stomach ache. Like, you know, bad. I'm like, oh, I know Pepto-Bismol will help me. I go to the cupboard. Yeah. I pull it out. I pull out Pepto-Bismol. The only Pepto-Bismol I have is kids' Pepto-Bismol. So I say to Jasmine, I'm like, can Which I take a weaker, a weaker strength? I, well, I said, I say, can I take kids Pepto-Bismol? She was like, yeah, why don't you be able to take kids Pepto-Bismol? I said, well, it's for kids. She's like, well, you were a kid once. I was like, yeah, but I'm not a kid now. Right. And she said, I, I'm almost positive you can take kids Pepto-Bismol. She was like, just take three of them. It says take two of them. Yeah. I looked at it, put it back, wouldn't take the medicine. Why? Because it said kids. I don't know. I just sat down and said, it's not for me. But I don't know, after talking it out with you and thinking about it, it's like, of course I could take a children's medicine. But I did, I thought, I don't know, because I don't know the way medicines work, and I don't know if like... Sure, you always pump the brakes when it has to do with medicine. With medicine, I just don't know, but I've never taken anything that's past the expiration date or not meant for me. Like, for example, if, if you were a doctor... Would you eat a Luna bar? Yeah. 
A Luna bar is formulated for women. I use women's that's deodorant, their, too. That's the whole thing. So do I. I use women's deodorant, too. I'm wearing women's secret. deodorant right now. I it's use women's secret. spray dove deodorant. I use secret. It's strong enough for a man. pH bounce for a woman. Made for a woman. Yeah. Strong enough for a man made for a woman. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. So yeah. you're fine with women's deodorant, but when it comes to... But Luna bars are made for women. Which is really? really odd to me that they cut out half the they yeah, cut why out half you, the potential bars. Is there something in there like I'm, this? You know I'm wild. I buy it anyway. You buy it anyway. Yeah. I'll tell you what. For I would say now two and a half weeks, as as you know, I've, I've said my uh, my girlfriend's pregnant. Due date July 4th. Um, I, for multiple weeks, just because I wasn't looking, I kept taking them from the back. I was taking her prenatal vitamins thinking it was my men's multivitamins. Okay. So I, I've taken two weeks now of that prenatal vitamins. Your swing, mood swings. <laughs> yeah, my mood swings. I'm loaded with folic acid and I'm growing a uterus. <laughs> I've taken I've taken her prenatal vitamins for two weeks. Truly okay. two weeks. All right. So And you didn't know? I yeah because I, I I would just grab it and then t- like basically in in the in the I've said cupboard now by the way is any other podcast I've said cupboard now three times yeah in less than yeah. in two minutes yeah. so I'll say it one more time and sure. then we're gonna move on from it you went in you grab your cards from the cupboard yeah so and I would pull out I would just pop pop it open from the back take one and then but always the label well, you probably thought it was just a multi yes. not a prenatal not a prenatal yeah I thought it was the same and then what is in the prenatal I think it's folic acid is the big thing folic acid which. Prenatal vitamins are specific to the needs of pregnant and breastfeeding women. Okay. Um, they're geared to make up the common nutritional def- deficiencies a pregnant woman could have, but they aren't really intended for women or men who aren't expecting or lactating. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was a mistake. Well, I we if can I'm being, say it now. If I'm for being 100% honest with you, I'm not expecting, but I am lactating. <laughs> so That's the thing that happens in pregnancy. Not that they lactate, but they. I, I saw this recently. The the, the, the breasts just start leaking. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, but just start leaking. Oh, yeah. No, she, if she goes like this right now, she can squirt it at me like like a water That's fountain. That's wild, though. Mm-hmm. It's like WikiLeaks. It's like titty leaks. I drank, I drank breast milk before just to, just to give it a taste. <laughs> Just to give it a you taste. You know, like whether she wants that stuff coming out or not, it's going to leak. It's like snowing. It's going to leak. It's coming out. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't, did he get pardoned? Snowden? Did Snowden get pardoned? I'm no. Oh. No. Ten amazing facts you probably didn't know about pregnancy. Your heart actually grows. Wow. Your partner may experience pregnancy symptoms. I feel that. I feel I'm I'm having yeah. symptoms. Symptoms that she's having, I'm having them. Like I have pregnancy brain. I feel like there's times where she's like, oh, I got pain in my uterus and I feel pain in where a uterus of, if I have one what would is, be. What is pregnancy brain? Just like a frazzle? Pregnancy brain is like you can't think of something and scatter brain and you feel so, your brain feels so mentally you exhausted. You're I not swear, you're on point. Yeah, I swear to God I feel that. Um, babies crying in the womb. You can crave non-food items. It's possible to be pregnant for over a year. What's, what, 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 let's break these down one by one if you have any interest, please. You can crave you can crave non-food items. What would you crave that's a non-food item? Like you just crave a baseball? <laughs> what, do you, what, what, is, what does that mean? Yeah. Like yeah. I just crave an official Major League Baseball. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I can't I, explain to you I'm pregnant. Uh, yeah, it's like you're just craving like Gary. Yeah, any, yeah. I'm, I'm craving Gary Sinise movies. <laughs> 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 okay, I guess so. It's saying they crave soap, chalk, or paper and stones. That's sorry. That's hey, babe, crazy. <laughs> she wanted to eat paper the other day. She had a desire to chew paper. I swear to God, she wanted to chew paper. That's what? nuts. Not chew paper. She asked me. That's she, odd. She said to me, she goes, you know what's so crazy right now? She goes, can you go to the printer and get me some printer paper? <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> and, I oh, said, shit. and I said, yeah, you're going to do Arts and Crafts with Delilah? She goes, no, I just want to <laughs> chew on it. <laughs> Holy cow. It's yeah, real. That's real. I wow. can't believe we just saw that. That's real. <laughs> she came back. You were, you were chewing on a Gary Sinise movie? <laughs> yeah. She was eating my freaking DVDs. You were DVDs. chewing on a Gary Sinise VHS? Yeah, she ate, she ate all the merch for my shows coming up at Atlantic City. <laughs> <laughs> for everybody, 12th and 13th, Atlantic City Theater, Christy Comedy for Ticks. There it Christy is. ChristyComedy.com. That's it. Yeah. Um, the longest pregnancy ever recorded was pregnancy of a woman named... B- Balula, Bula Hunter from Los Bula, Angeles. That's Bula. You know how I know that? How do you know? That's the name of an elephant. That, not, no joke. <laughs> no joke. We had an elephant in like season one of the show. They hid my car keys in the middle of elephant shit, and I had to stand. The elephant was standing right next to me, and I had to go through all the elephant shit to find my car keys. The elephant's name was Bula. Bula. Yeah. Well, and and speak and Bu- and elephants have very long pregnancies. This woman, Bula. 
12 and a half month long, a whopping three months longer than the average pregnancy. God, I don't know how or why that happened. Whoa. A 12 and a half month pregnancy? That's a lot. So what, the kid was just like in there wearing dungarees well, already? Well, really, a lot of people say pregnancies are nine months, but it's really 10 months. When you when it's, right. it's ten months right. pregnancy, I don't know also, why we go like, like nine. Months. When they're born, why don't we be like, ah, oh, you're ten months old? Yeah, right. Because Instead of zero. Yeah. So really, right now you're thirty five and ten months or whatever the hell. I'm thirty six. I'm I'm closer to thirty seven than I think. Right. Right. Interesting. <laughs> so it was so yeah. So we were going back. So so go back to okay. So that's a non non food item. But if we can go back to the things that happen during pregnancy, because there was one after that that list you had. Well, it said it said yeah. You, it's possibly pregnant for over a year, okay. Babies cry in the womb. Okay, what Your else? Your feet can grow up to one full size. That all makes sense to me. Okay. Taller women are more likely to conceive twins. That's wild. What's the reason there? Maybe more of a protein. Maybe they have more of a, I bet you it's some type of protein that makes them tall. So like the WNBA just they're, shooting out twins. Shoot, twins all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Certain protein release from the liver that is linked to increased ovulation. Yeah, I knew it was something. Women something over five foot five. That's, I guess. That's tall. I mean, I guess that's tall. By the way, I I, I think I I I've, I've, there's one scientific what, what is it? There's one scientifically proven method to bring on labor, wacky methods of labor passed down through generations. There's actually one which has been significantly proven to work. Nipple stimulation tricks your body into thinking you're feeding your baby. Here's the thing: I, I've told this before, and I, I may have told this on this podcast. Talk to me, but I've told this when Delilah, my daughter, was being born. She was four days late. The the doula, yeah, the doula, the doula was like a you know like a Jewish. Um, like midwife told me and my girl, they were like, the only way if you want to increase, if you want to induce labor in the next hour, then what you need to do is swallow his semen. That's what you need to do. Swear to God. She, her response was, she goes, you have to be kidding me. She goes, did he pay you to say that? That's what she said. And then, and well, then she goes, how, is no. that feasible? how is that possible? She said, because there's properties when, when semen is ingested. But she told, but with straight face. Wanted you to do that. Little Jewish woman says, if you want to have the baby, if you want to go into labor soon, what you need to do is swallow his semen. And she was like, trust me, the baby will be born within the next 10 hours. You can I'll, you can call her I, up and you, ask. Were you guys like, we're going to take, we're going to respectfully pe- take a pass? We were in the middle of a, we were in the hospital. <laughs> right, right. So <laughs> I said, how am I supposed to do that? Right, 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 right. And literally time is going by time's going by time's going by hour two hours and i kept saying like you know <laughs> like, we could Jazz, look, i'm like look we could, we could put this to bed right now put this to bed right now i said i'm ready to go she said no 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 i'm not gonna do it i would say maybe five hours after that she finally like started going to labor and water broke but I, she told me then after she gave birth she was like you maybe had 20 more minutes she said and i would have just she's like i would have done it in front of your mother and that's what she said she said i don't care she was like i needed to get this baby out yeah yeah so all right so there you go and now what what's your take on me carving mold out of the cheese to eat the remaining cheese non malt i think that you carving the mold you out to that? eat the remaining of the cheese i think that you it's bad it, you're a tough guy to pin down because it's like you said, for as germ as as much of a germaphobe as you can, you know, admittingly be, the fact that you're going to eat potentially molded cheese, yeah, it's crazy that I do that. Right? Makes me think what what do you actually care about? I just feel I don't like to be wasteful. That's where it's yeah, okay. coming from. That's Believe it me, I, it's like I was it's like I was born during the Great Depression or something. Oh, you could have been, by the way, watching a little show on Netflix called Chasing Death, episode on reincarnation. You may very well be from the reincarnation. Is you that may, right? You may very well be from the Great Depression era. Okay. Very possible. Whatever well, you feel connected to. Yeah, I feel a guilt in wasting stuff. Like, okay. I, when I walk out of a room, I shut the light. I won't leave a running faucet on. You have a, you've had a dead goldfish in your freezer for eight years. There you go. And another thing is, like, I'll keep everything goes in the fridge as leftovers. Right. And then I, I will always try to get the leftovers done before I get new. I just don't like to be wasteful. It's interesting too because mold is a type of fungus that's used in like antibiotics. So you would think if you're eating penicillin, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you think like if you're if you're if you have an infection, like right now I have an infection on my finger, I could just go eat a bunch of your moldy cheese and clear the infection. <laughs> you know, we should try it. I'm what down. Do you smudge. I don't know if I threw it out. What if you sm- smear all the green mold all over your open wound? I, am I Patreon. Well, Let's do it for the Patreon. <laughs> By the way, did I ever tell you the story of when I got an infection in my finger in England and what happened? I don't believe so. Okay. I. By the way, this is this for anybody, and I get that. I'm excited. Every, I get any. Everybody has different stories for for whatever. I get that. Literally, I w- there it goes. I was I deserve to lean hundred percent. 
I this is a two part story. I yeah. think the second part you've heard. Yeah. I went to England, London, biting my nails, nervous on the flight. A couple of days go by, I get an infection in my finger to the point where I can't even bend my hand. It's, Painful. I had red streak. It's like a serious infection. It, it it was crazy. I'm on the other side. I'm across the pond. Yeah. I'm saying, you know, anybody out there who says, oh, America has the best healthcare system, you know, uh, national healthcare doesn't work, you got to wait, whatever, uh, fine, you know, everyone has their own personal stories, fine, fine, fine. I'm telling you my story with national healthcare was un was the, the, the service I got was so crazy that I thought maybe it was some kind of scheme and I wasn't in a hospital and I was going to be robbed or I was on some type of prank show. Because it was uh, good. It would, here's what happened. I go in, it was my right hand. I had an infection in my finger, like you can't imagine. Like I said, I couldn't throbbing. Throb. I couldn't move my hand at the wrist. That's how much it was swollen. So I had, I had to. If it cost me, you couldn't inhale a cab. No chance. I couldn't inhale anything. So, so um, um, people always. Uh, you guys are so mad that we edit cursing. I'm trying it. Hey, hey babe. babe. That's it. <laughs> Suck it. We curse. Everyone curses. We hear curses all the time. You need to hear the cursing. Yeah, go to. I, I, I want to go right back to this, but you guys with the like, I don't want the cursing. I need to hear the curses. It doesn't matter, you stupid piece of shit, babe. babe. There it is. Like it doesn't even matter. We've cursed our whole lives. All we're trying to do is just like, eh, I don't want to hear. F maybe we're just, yeah. just trying. We're just trying something. We're different. just trying something different. That's all it is. Who the. F you know, we get, yo, they, the, the algorithm doesn't look at the 30 seconds. And uh, yes, the other people curse and I still get the same ads. And, uh, who cares, man? Yes. Refocus your energy. Reprioritize. You need to hear me say. Hey, babe. So, so, with, so with my infected finger, I go in there. I can't write with my right hand. You know, because my right hand genuinely doesn't work. I have to try to fill out this form with the left hand. So there's a nurse, you know, there or like a, a. I think she was a nurse. She was dressed in a nurse outfit, but right there, there was basically nobody in the in the emergency room. I, I think she was a nurse. Yeah. She had the nurse hat on. She looked like she worked at <laughs> she In and Out Burger. Nurse or a spy? A nurse or a spy? She was. I think she was a nurse. She but had she was, the outfit. Yeah, well, she the old school nurse outfit with that hat that looked like she worked at In and Out Burger. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like Mrs. Ratchet. Yeah, Mrs. Nurse, nurse Ratchet. Ratchet. Great show. Shout out. Is that? Sarah, Sarah Paulson. Oh, okay. Netflix. She's great. Great. I almost confused her with the Nurse Jackie. Edie Falco. Edie Falco, who, who's, God bless her. I, I know Edie was on our show recently. Great. Stupendous guest. That great. means good, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Also, shout out uh, Catherine Narducci, who was the uh, was actress, Italian actress. You've seen in many things. Also was the wife of Robert De Niro in Bronx Tale uh, for the last few years has been commenting on my Instagram thinking I'm a fully open homosexual man. <laughs> no, so shout oh, out really? Catherine Arduce. Why did she the, think that? Met you for the first time last week. I don't know. She told the homeless pimp. She's like, I, I know that guy. She's like, you know, your friend Chris, he's great, a gay comedian. I support him. She's like, yeah, he's not gay. He's got, <laughs> a, why, he's got kids. Um, but yeah. thanks. Shout out Catherine Arduce. Um <laughs> that, that doesn't mean a lot. I know a lot of guys that have kids that are gay. True. Well, I know three. Yeah. Uh, my, I have an uncle, gay. Um, kids. So, so, um, uh, so I go, I go to the, to the A&E, it's called the ambulance. <laughs> I, I, I just imagine him introducing himself like that. Yeah. Like, how you doing? Charles, gay, three kids. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. How you doing? So I go in and I say, I say to her, she says, oh, you fill out this form. So, so I say, <laughs> I, I say the problem is, ma'am, I said two things. One, I'm an American citizen. I have a passport to prove that. She's just looking at me. She's like, okay. Yeah. And then two, I said, I can't fill out the form because I can't write left. And she goes, do, do what you can, love. So I literally wrote, like, it looked like I wrote my name backwards. I could barely do it. I was writing it lefty. I didn't even put in my address. I, I swear to God, for residents, I just put USA okay. because I couldn't right. write with the hand. And then they called me in. The doctor called me in, but not even in. So let me try to explain this. I'm <laughs> filling out the form to the right of the left of the desk. Filling out the nurses, look at me, I'm writing USA, my name backwards, the K, you know, Christopher with a K, like yeah. a five-year-old. The doctor yes. calls me from the other side of the desk and says, um, next patient, please, next patient, please. And there's nobody around. There's nobody around. So I said, is that me? I said, I haven't filled out the form yet. He goes, don't worry about it. <laughs> so I walk to him. Literally, I'm still out in the waiting room. Imagine yeah. in the waiting room of a hospital that nobody's in, and there's a nurse, I think is a nurse, dressed like she's serving in and out burgers, and then a doctor. Yeah. Yes. And he goes, what's the problem? 
So I, I showed him my hand and I said, I, I was biting my nails on the plane, which I know I'm not supposed to do. Mm-hmm. I ex- overexplained. I said, no, I'm not supposed to yeah. do it. It's a bad habit. My mother's been telling me to stop doing it for years. I said, but now I have an infection in my hand and my hand and wrist are swollen. He goes, I can see that very clearly. And I said, so what, you know, like, should we go in the back or whatever? He goes, well, are you allergic to uh, any types of medication, antibiotics, penicillin, anything? And I said, I could, I could listen to this all day. I, yeah, I swear to God, we'll talk about that after. This. Yeah, I said, I said, no, I'm not. He goes, okay. He goes, well, what we're going to do first is, he goes, first I have to lance it. And he said it like that. I'll never forget. He said, lance it. He said, first I'm going to have to lance it. He said, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little, uh, he's gonna, he said he's going to put penicillin on the tip. And then he literally, uh, Sal, but you have to understand one thing, what I'm telling you. I, I'm literally, I'm standing, I, hand to God. I forgot what the name of the hospital was, but it was in the, H somewhere in London. H to G. I'm standing somewhere in, in London in a hospital. The doctor, it's 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 the, the waiting room, a vending machine, and the doctor with the lance with penicillin at the tip of it, lancing my finger, then giving, so with penicillin on it, then he gave me no pharmacy, no nothing like that, gives me pills. Right gi- there. 14 days of pills. He says, 14 days of, of antibiotic pills plus Pepto Bismol or their ver- uh, the the Pepto Bismol forgot what it's called. Yeah, whatever. it's like Bism 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 yeah something Bismol Pepto Bismol but yeah. but there's Bismuth. More, but yeah but that's but there's points to the story to that. So he gives me that he gives me the Bismuth and he gives me and he says if come back in two days if you have any type of allergic reaction he goes we'll give you another medicine that's it. So I'm like I'm like that's it like whatever he goes that's it. So as I'm walking out, I'm leaving. The, the woman says, oh, love, 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 love. Come back. Mm-hmm. She goes, you forgot. You forgot something. <laughs> and I said, and I said, I said, oh, yeah, I have USA written, you know, and, you know, uh, I'm sure there's a copay. She goes, oh, no, 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 no. She goes, we give you money. They gave me $20 <laughs> to take a cab home from the hospital. No. I swear to God. That's all oh, you. That's what they did in England. I didn't have to go to a pharmacy. I didn't have to give a prescription or do anything like that. I wasn't even a city. I wrote USA uh, of where I live. They didn't even know my name. What are, what are we doing? What are we doing here? They gave me twenty dollars to take an Uber home. I took the medication, like I took the antibiotics. A day later, my finger and wrist are half the size. Three days later, I'm back, fully jerking off, no problems. Back, back. And you? And how much was the Uber? The Uber was it less than twenty dollars? Had to Did be less than twenty. Did you make it on a deal? Did 100? he buy you lunch? I made it on a deal. He bought me lunch. Then I'm going to Heathrow Airport. Just in case, because I didn't trust, because how I told you, I don't trust medications with the expiration date. Yeah. I won't even take a Pepto-Bismol, kids. I said, I'm not taking this funky-ass British version of Pepto-Bismol. Right. Whatever this doctor gave me who just, you know, him and nurse, him and the in and out lady gave me the, 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 the treatment on the other side of the counter. Yeah. I went and I found a store that had Pepto-Bismol because I wanted Pepto-Bismol. Actual Pepto. Actual. What, I'm sorry, what? What did Pepto Bismol have to do with the cut on your finger? In case I had diarrhea from the antibiotics, they gave me a, something to hurt, help my stomach. Got it. So I get to Pepto Bismol. I get to Pepto Bismol. I put your time, take your time. Yeah, because it's bringing back memories. Yeah, they just get, they get extra content. I I I go to Pepto Bismol. I, you know, take it just in case, coat the stomach, put it in my bag, forget about it. Going to Heathrow Airport. I don't know. Whenever I leave, three days later, four days later. Packed Heathrow Airport, London. Packed, Sal. Like you can't imagine. <laughs> like squirting around the lines, going around the lines. I feel like I know where it's yeah. going. Yeah, going around the lines. You know, whatever. All of a sudden, get there. Packed. Bag. Of course, put the bag through. Gets flagged. Of course, gets flagged. I'm like, what the hell do I have? And I don't have anything in it. Like, it's just like annoying. Like whatever. Like, think you're gonna miss your flight? Packed. The you know TSA equivalent in England comes over, starts rummaging through the bag. You know, pulling things out. Pulls out the Pepto Bismol. He goes, "What's this?" And I said, uh, "I said it's you know it's nothing like you know I said it's I take the antibiotics like it's nothing like you can just dump it out." He goes, "No, no, no. What is it? What what is it?" And I said, "It's it's for like you know if you know if you, your stomach doesn't feel good or like some type of indigestion, but like you know it's fine. It's just it's totally fine. You can dump it out. I don't need it. I'm telling him I don't need it. It's, it's packed. Right. I'm like you. I do not need that. Like throw it out right now." Literally 10 feet away, there's another TSA agent just like typing on our computer. And he goes, Becky, Becky. Wait, wait, wait. He turned into a Brooklyn cab driver from the 50s. <laughs> from the 50s. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, uh, what is this, love? 
Becky. Becky. He goes, Becky. I think her name was Becky. Yeah, it had to be Becky. Yes, he goes, <laughs> he, he goes, he goes, Becky, Becky. He goes, Pepto Bismol. What is it? What's it used for? And she's typing. She just looks up. She goes, diarrhea. <laughs> And then looks back at the screen. Everybody, he she screamed <laughs> diarrhea across this perfect airport. He goes, oh, he goes, would you be needing it for your flight? I said, no, you can throw it away. He goes, okay, carry on. Throws it away. I zip on my bag, turn around. Who's right behind me? The chain smokers. <laughs> <laughs> What are the odds? <laughs> the band, the chain smokers. What are the odds that the chain smokers are behind you in that moment? That's what it is, babe. I will follow a, a, an English man to the end of the earth. To the end an of the English earth. An English man might be able to take me away from my family. 100%. So they, fellas. Or a woman, or a woman. It's just the accent. I mean, an English man, or I should clarify, or a woman. It's not the man that's taking me away, yeah. but you were saying you were a man. It, it's, it's, it's the English accent is something, is yeah, it dude, not? And I got to be honest with you, any time when I was like in a bar with my friends or whatever like that, like growing up, anybody who had a British accent, I almost wouldn't even believe them. I'd be like, you're putting on that accent to yeah. try to get laid. Yeah. You have to prove to me. I would always ask somebody, name me five towns in London, in England now. Name me five towns. Yeah. And and then, and then, and then, and then they do it or no? London, Bath, <laughs> London, Bath, Sussex, Essex, <laughs> Newcastle. Sure. There's so many. Yeah. All right. Yeah, well, you did it. You five. did it well. <laughs> uh, people tend to think of foreign accents more interesting and more sexy, says Guy Winch, a psychotherapist from Britain who's long based in the United States because in general, we tend to value what's less common. That's what it is. By um, the way, you and I, before the pandemic, we were talking about big time going and hitting the road in England because I told you that's always been a dream of mine. You've yeah. lived you've lived that dream where you've went all over England. I toured England The countryside. That's I what I want to do with you. Those are my those are my main peeps out there, man. I love England. Them. The Dude, British are the best. And I want to I want to do a solo stand up tour through. Well, we should tour together. Through I, England, I'll come up whatever because yeah. I just literally I'll just I'll be your tour manager. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no. We'll, I've we'll always in my life for some reason I've had a dream and a want, and I don't know why where it comes from. We can absolutely have. We can have. Maybe we do like a stand up, stand up. Pod, like, I'm pod not, we'll, we'll figure something out. I want to be for some reason. I maybe want we'll to come, have. We'll, we'll tape it. We'll take the. I want to have Patreon. A, Patreon. I want to have a fan base in England. That's just I. Anytime I get a message from somebody from England to, that supports my comedy, you don't understand. Like I feel like I'm living a dream. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because the British therapist said it's just something that's not common. I don't know. My only uh, d my only dealings with fans out in England is that they've all been amazing. Exactly what you want. The like, best. They're just amazing. They're just like really. Mm -hmm. Loyal, supportive, courteous. Yes, like they they get it. You know they appreciate it. Yeah, I find they're they're more pure. Like just pure comedy fans. fans. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's beautiful. Shout out England. Shout out Britain. And who knows yeah. the difference between England and Britain? Shout them all out. Shout out Great Britain. Shout out Great Britain. Shout, shout out the whole United shout Kingdom. Out Brexit is that? Something? Shout out Brexit. Yeah. Shout out. I'll, I'll even uh, shout exit. Exit. Even the Republic of Ireland. I know there's be you know Republic. Yeah. Everybody. Shout them all out. Shout out Belfast. Shout them out. Just shout out everything. Shout them out. Shout, shout out, out another shout place. Out Irishman shout out uh, shout out Shetland. Shout out Shetland Pony. Shout out the show Shetland, which I just watched on Netflix, Murder Mystery Show. Shetland, unbelievable place. Half of it, <laughs> they half of it people think belongs in Norway. Norway's another fascinating thing. We don't have enough time to talk about it though. Norway had a problem with the vaccine. What happened? Oh, yeah, like 30 people I died. I don't know from why just in Norway, though. You know, I don't understand that. There's a lot of things in the news I don't understand lately. I don't understand the GameStop thing that happened. You don't understand that. Not really. I mean, I think what happened there with GameStop is just a bunch of nerds came in and just drove up the stock price of GameStop. How? Here's what I think happened. All right? I'm going to take a crack at trying to explain this. Yeah. Do you know what shorting a stock is? I be, I, yeah, I, I'm, a fi I'm a major in finance, but uh, no, I don't. So it was shorting the stock. years ago. You, you buy it. So what stock, what hedge fund, and I'm probably going to kill me on the comments for this, but we're going to take a chance. You buy it when it hits a certain, you put in an order. And you I think what, what hedge fund people do is they, they purposely control the media and the narrative and say, this stock sucks, sell it, it sucks, and they drive the price all the way down. Some stock is saying, forget this stock, it sucks, don't buy the stock, blah, 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 it sucks, sucks, sucks. Right. And they drive the price of it all the way down, knowing that they're going to buy it when it's really low, sure and then so. change the tune, right. and drive it all the way up, and make so much money. How do you change the tune? It's just a, it's a bunch of people descending on the stock. Yeah. Uh, it's a coordinated attack. Exactly, the hedge fund people. So what happened with GameStop, I believe, is the GameStop, Counter. they were trying to short it out. They were going to short it out. The same hedge fund people, like uh, the CEO of Robinhood, which is like the investor, like they're all hedge fund people. 
they were going to yeah. short the stock. They, they they control the narrative a lot of times. They went and up, we were like, no, nah, no, nah, someone else is going to control the They narrative. were like, they basically came on the air one day last weekend out of nowhere. But you know what? Fuck GameStop. But they but they don't realize they picked the wrong. You don't mess with GameStop. You don't mess don't with mess computer with video game nerds. No. So they tried to short GameStop thinking, let's drive this price low, low, low. Then we're going to say GameStop's the future. And blah, 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 blah. You know, in a year from now, and we're going to drive it right Isn't back that up. Like insider trading, though? A tech, in a, in yeah, a but way, he, like, right, but hedge funds, hedge fund people Netflix. get away with it. But that, that's what it is. This is the David versus Goliath story. It's something that Goliath would always do, you know, these hedge fund billionaires. So what happened was, which they didn't account for, is the GameStop people, yeah. the game, the people who love GameStop, the guys playing their video games or whatever, banded together on a Reddit forum and said, everybody buy GameStop right now. We're going to lose it. Drove the price up from $14 to like $400. Somebody who had $52,000 of shares of GameStop that's overnight, $21 million. That's insane. Yeah. So what does that person they do right Siegfried now? They had Siegfried and Roy but money. Now is he done? Now is it? Nobody has that. That's true. You mean Siegfried Fischbacher and Roy Horn? Yes. Yeah. I spoke at a turn. I'm sorry. I, I swear to God, though, but now what is that person? Doesn't he have to dump all that to make that money back before it falls back down? No. So isn't, in essence, he doing the same thing because now he's going to dump it all? Well, no. Well, that guy, no, that. he could cash out. Right. Cash out right now and get, make $20 million. You can't just cash out, though. Someone has to buy it, no? No. I th right now, it's worth $340. So if you shell the, sell the shares of it, he would get the money. But that means someone has to buy it at $340. Well, I think they kind of unionized on Reddit, and he's everyone's agreed to hold. That's why they're holding the line. As a hey babe to the hedge fund guys. That's ah. why they're holding the line. This is pretty much Occupy Wall Street, except. Right. Literally. Got it. Wow. So it's three hundred forty. And they said they're about to do it with another another uh, AMC, I think. AMC, because AMC is possibly going out of business, or nobody's going hurting, to the movies. Hurting because nobody's going to the movies. Which, by the way, Practical Joke is the movie in theaters during when the pandemic hit. I remember I saw hey, it. Shout out AMC. Good partners. Shout out AMC. I met Paul Abdul there. At, right. at the, it was great. Didn't you? Did you? Did you? I did, tried. I tried to. I tried to. I changed numbers. We changed numbers with Paul Abdul. You, you did. You did it. You did not. You I, I tried did. too. I did. But same thing happened to me with Paul Abdul as as to Jerry Seinfeld. I was told, "Hey, text me anytime you want." Left on left on red. I do text with Paula, text but I'm, I, I you know my 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 introduction and our relationship is a bit different than you meeting her that night. I get it. But she's a top notch, classy gal. Yeah, no, so it's great. You, though. I'll never forget. I was literally at, at the Impractical Jokers uh, movie premiere after party. I was standing in between Paul Abdul on my right, Chris Cuomo on my left. Uh, was eating <laughs> mozzarella sticks, farted, put my plate down, left. <laughs> I never say goodbye to you, Chris Cuomo. Chris Cuomo, the, the CNN mean? news anchor Chris Cuomo was at your Impractical Jokers. No, he was not. Swear, ask Casey Jost. I didn't know that. We were making. I was. I farted next to Chris <laughs> Cuomo in the middle of Chris Cuomo and Paul Abdul. Chris Cuomo was at your party. I. You can I verify that I, with anybody. I, I don't know him. I don't know how he got there. I'm, uh, Chris wow, Cuomo was there. Fascinating. Chris Cuomo. You know, it was, you know, there was so much, there's just an eclectic mix there. And I know we, we probably got it. We're probably over time. Yeah, Ecle whatever. Eclectic mix. But we had, uh, we had so many people there. We'll get into another time. We'll get huh? into another time. What, what do you do? What are you, what are you going to do, really? Because we don't want to go too over. We don't go too over. And we you got, got big, the, yeah. And you got big things. You got your, your, I mean, because this, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We can't spend too much time in this podcast because what we need you to do is go to True TV right now because the Impractical Joker season nine is out. I'll tell you another thing. I need you to stay tuned on True TV because somebody else has a new show on True TV that's coming out. Listen, everybody who watches that watches the show and watches True, you're going to be seeing a familiar face on True TV. Someone just got his own show on True TV. I got my Why don't own. we talk about it a little bit? I got my own show on True TV. I This is my ninth pilot that I've done for, for the longest I've called myself Chrissy Pilots, but now let's change that to Chrissy Pickups. That's because right. Because the first pilot I've ever done and been a part of got picked up to air. It's called Backyard Bar Wars with Chris Stefano, where I'm going to be the host of two friends competing in their backyards to see who's going to build a bigger, better, cooler bar. And I just get drunk and we make fun of everybody and each other the whole time. I, I mean, look, if you know Chris or you don't know Chris or you watch this and now you Chris or whatever yeah. from Chris, you, you know what Chris does. You know what Chris he does? is going to do what Chris does on that show. So the show <laughs> is secondary. Chris's commentary is first. And people are going to end up watching that show. I wish I wanted to succeed. I yeah. think it's a cool idea. But n there's no doubt in my mind. Let's just let's let's just be honest. Yes. That show hinges. That show is going to be successful because of you and your jokes and your riffing and your commentary and your personality. I appreciate. So it. I, I say, watch that show if you want to see more of Chris. Do what he does. Thank you. I appreciate it because what True TV told me was they said that we're really excited about this. I said because you know, Impractical Jokers is uh, you know season nine. You know, we're going to go season ten. We're going to go. We're going to go all these seasons. They said, but you know, we know it's been on a while. And they said, you know, we wanted to have a show that encapsulates a. Uh, 
upwards of 25 year friendship with four best friends <laughs> pulling pranks on each other through the streets of New York City. And they said, we don't think we think a show where you hosting with two friends who don't know each other, building backyards and you hosting that show from Los Angeles is the exact complimentary show that's that says impractical jokers without saying impractical jokers so that's why they picked it up they said this is they said this is like impractical jokers too and i said listen watching the pilot it's me it's me and two black guys building bars i said that looks just like four white guys from staten island who have been friends for 30 years to me i said and that's it that we should have just called it impractical jokers too i actually said i'm i'm excited to do the show but it looks a little bit like joker so and i do a podcast with sal and i don't want to think that we stole your idea do you know when it's going to be <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when it's going to be on? By I chance? think in the summertime. But so might it might it be on? Like, well, we, maybe we, sometimes they use us to lean into the new- plan. That's the plan. They want yeah. to put ours on after you. The plan is right now. We're going to start filming in March. We're going to start filming soon next month, yeah. and then hopefully first episode on in the summer. July. That's right. So you you might go out to L.A. in March, and then I might go out to L.A. in March be to out be there. on Family Feud. It's, dude, when you go out to Family Feud, we'll all and then we'll come out. And we'll go. We'll do the L.A. podcast and we'll hang out. That's right. That's what that's what we should so we'll do. do. That's a great idea. Yeah, I actually, I've been to L.A. in so long. We should get on. We should go on all of our friends' podcasts. Hey, if our friends are watching, we have yeah. podcast in L.A. and we know you're listening. We'll 100%. come on your podcast. We're we'll going Brendan Chomp's podcast. Yeah. Huge, huge fan. fan. Huge, huge fan. fan. We should go. I, on um, yeah. yeah. So that's it. So and listen, if you want to see me, if you want to see his live stand up, Christy comedy.com Atlantic City we got coming up uh, the Vogel in Red Bank New Jersey those shows are almost sold out go get them and then Phoenix Arizona February 25th 27th ChristyComedy.com also have my own podcast Christy Chaos Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy enjoy the fun that's crazy. That's I mean, look at I mean, look at what you got going on right now. Look at that going on. Come on, man. Then we're doing the true and TV this is pilot in a pandemic, and you're doing all this in a pandemic. How do you? Thank you, Bob. And I'm yeah. having a baby. July Fourth due date. I mean, that's the least of it, but great. Yeah, hundred um, uh, percent. Yeah, I'm not on the road right now. Will be if those dates will be on SalvoCanoComedy.com. Jokers is on Tuesday night. Season nine just started. Uh, Ten o'clock True TV. And Misery Index is on Thursday nights. Ten thirty TBS. Uh, hopefully, dinner party will come back and then. Uh, I talked about it before. Text me on my community app. Listen, I still want to talk about this community app at some point, but I never do. But and I should memorize my own number. But that's right? the show. Is we always get to something we're never going to talk about and keep people waiting. I'm on a community app. I get your text seven one eight two six zero six six one nine. Text me. Sometimes I answer, but I always give you information first on the app. Uh, that was fun. Absolutely. R I P Siegfried and Roy. Look out for the Patreon. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't hesitate. Say hey, babe.